this is Carlos at Small World Games on YouTube and welcome to another Blood Red Skies painting tutorial. Today I'm going to be painting a the, well, the RAF, um, the RAF uh, painting scheme. We're going to look at the uh, colours used and um, which I'll display at the end and uh, I'll also at the end have a look at the all the RAF craft I've done so far so sort of almost a showcase if you will. Um, I want to just first of all do a uh, bit of a shout out to uh, Frank Day um, who uh, commented on the previous video, um, my JU88, specifically uh, saying looking forward to the uh, the Blenheim video. Unfortunately, and my apologies, um, in a bit of a rush to get that done for an upcoming game, I have already done those and I didn't unfortunately have the time to video it. However, we're going to have a look um, at those at the end uh, and we'll discuss any fundamental differences between um, for example this aircraft and that one because the scheme I'm using on this is going to be pretty much relevant for any RAF aeroplane during the period. Uh, the period I'm looking at is the Battle of Britain, the sort of 1940-1941 um, era and uh, just before I believe as well if you're doing any you know, gaming in uh, 1939 even though uh, to my knowledge there wasn't so much of that going on at the time involving these craft. Right then, um, so the specifically the plane I'm looking at today is a Hawker Hurricane 1, um, specifically that belonging to uh, a group captain, Sir Douglas Barder of uh, 242 Squadron. Now, um, the reason I've mainly chosen this, uh, because this is my squadron, is because, um, I don't know if maybe I've, you know, might be an error, but it seems there's a lot of love going out there for 303 Squadron, and rightfully so, of course. Um, however, Douglas Barder, to me, um, it's a name I've known from a young age. I uh, remember watching um, Kenneth Moore in uh, Reach for the Skies, which is an epic film. Just being fascinated by how this um, this individual, uh, not only obviously known as a almost legendary character as a great fighter pilot, but also as um, overcoming uh, such crippling injuries as he did, um, and uh, just obviously just being such a such a hero for uh, so many reasons. Uh, so just want to do my own little piece and. Uh, just um, yeah, that's that's the inspiration for me with regards to uh, choosing this squadron, um, and of course amongst others who uh, served in uh, 242, um, who again did amazing fighting the Battle of Britain, and um, just want to kind of honour that as best I can. Right then, so without further ado, I'm going to get painting, and I'm going to start with the uh, green camouflage for that. I'll be using entirely um, Cisdel colour on these, and I'm going to be using uh, Castellan green. For the uh, for the base for the green camouflage, um, you will notice uh, in the excitement when I was doing my other hu uh, hurricanes, I've already painted the uh, canopy on canopy canopy. Sorry, it's a completely different thing. Um, and for that, I will uh, mention the paints uh, involved at the end. But uh, I'll also do a link at the bottom for my previous video Ju88, uh, which details it on there. It's the same. Uh, it's the same paints. Right then, so let's get on with this camouflage. So I've used the same pattern on all my RAF planes. Um, obviously, in some of these, this looks somewhat accurate, but it was also uh, the easiest um, way to get them done uh, quite quick because I am eventually going to end up having quite a lot of planes to paint. So uh, the colours and the scheme are the same on all my uh, ones so far, which uh, ultimately I'll do every plane of mine with this, which ultimately will involve things like the... Well, obviously the Spitfires, these Hawker Hurricanes, Bristol Blenheims, and uh, Bristol Blue Fighters. Uh, they've just recently released those, along with the um, Bomb Paul Defiance, which have uh, recently been released in metal, which uh, I'll be looking forward to doing some of those and adding them to my, uh, my squadron. Well, not squadron, I suppose. My, uh, my force. Right, so I'm going to be laying this on. I'm trying to do it uh, fairly flat, but uh, once I've done this, I'll be giving it a wash, and uh, then I'll be painting another shade over it. So uh, I'll try and get it nice and thin. I'm not watering this down because uh, this particular pot is a, a bit damper already, but I'm not going to water this base coat down. However. If it is a bit streaky, it's not so important because I will be giving it another more uh, more careful coat once I've done the uh, the weathering. Well, the shading, should I say? 
Make sure that's all done in there. Okay, so just getting the last little bit of this on, which uh, looking at my uh, reference material, I'm going to take that right down to the wing. Bit off there. And that is the green done. As I already said, just make sure you've got it mainly into all the recesses, but the uh, the patchy, uh, the sort of if it's a bit patchy on top, doesn't matter so much because we're going to go over it again in a bit. So that to me looks like everything's covered. Yep, yeah, that's the pattern I've gone with. The um, the brown is the base coat, which is leather brown from uh, the Army Painter, and that's uh, what I've done all of my RAF planes with. The Germans, I've used the uniform grey for the Luftwaffe. Yeah, there it's Army Painter's uniform grey, as that's the main colour I've used in that. Apart from obviously my um, my bombers, which you've already seen. And I'll describe the ones I'm using there. Okay, cool. So, next up, now that's done, I'm going to use uh, corn red to do the little bit. In fact, no, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm going to do that next after I do the base, which in this case is going to be Rakarth Flesh. And this will be just when I say base, I mean the under the underneath. That's what I'm going to use on here. So for the underneath, that's going to be the wings, the front, a bit of the side, and uh, the tail wings there. You know what? I've just done that and I put fingers all over it. Yeah, I think I've got away with that. Cool. Okay, so to do this once again, I'm going to give it a coat of something else over after I've washed everything. So I've uh, shaded everything. So uh, obviously we want to get a decent covering on it, but um as long as you're getting all the recesses, if the top layer isn't quite so hot, it's not the end of the world. Um, so that's uh, been covered all over, not very uh, Neatly you'll notice, but uh, a bit patchy, but once again, uh, we'll be covering all that. So uh, it's very much uh, more a first coat than uh, than a full-on base. And again, I also haven't added, added any water, but this uh, particular paint, I've had it for a few years, and it's uh, it's quite uh, it's quite watered down already, quite a thin consistency. Okay, oops. <laughs> A little bit more on the edge. Bit that off. And there you go. Okay, so we've done that all over. A little bit of the front underneath. So just a bit more up there. See what the underneath is that side even. Uh, I think I could do the tiny little bit more. There we go. Okay, now <laughs> I've done the same problem there, but uh, mind you, that does look like now that I've done the other side, it does look like I could do with a bit more of a, a bit more along there. So there you go. That will do us. And a bit more in there just to get the colour. There you go. Lovely. Okay, well, now that I've done that, now we can move on to the uh, next bit which will be uh, in corn red. 
This is just going to go around the, uh, the wing machine guns. It's just a little application. So that's the best thing about these paints. They do dry very quickly, so I can just move straight from one bit to another. Probably one of the quickest, uh, quickest ones I've ever done. Right, and so we're just going to apply a little uh, rectangle around the machine guns themselves. I'll just do a little base colour and then I'll neaten it up in a second. Can you see that? There we go. Just over the machine guns. Bring that up a little bit to the, uh, the start. Just the first little there. Uh, a little bit of detail on the wing there, just to get a good area. If I put it all on the front, you wouldn't really see it, which uh, isn't what I was going for. to get the area covered and I can work on neatening up, up in a second so I think that's where we're going to take it up to and underneath get my reference model and that's uh, once again that's the same it goes uh, towards the back I think I mentioned this last time, it's a little weird, but uh, the underneath of these models, you don't really see them in the game so much, but I uh, still want to put as much effort into it as, uh, as I can. Tabletop standard as uh, I'm going for here, I uh, still want it to look good. Well then, there you go. And on to the next wing. Okay. So that's the other wing done. One last little cross there just to get it straight. And I could do a little neatening up just there. Uh, and I'm happy over there. Okay, so there's the uh, red patch covering the machine guns. Um, I don't know why they do that. I mean, um, I suppose not really a warning, uh, or maybe it is. <laughs> a warning system uh, so uh, yeah if, uh, if uh, anyone out there knows why they do that please uh, let me know in the comments uh, below I uh, have learnt a lot from the comments I've had on here and uh, I'll take that as an opportunity to thank everybody so far for the uh, likes comments and um, subscriptions even I think I've got a few uh, recently off the back of some of these videos so that's uh, very good of you all thank you as I said as much as I enjoy doing my videos um, I do make them for people to watch and enjoy, so as long as I know people are doing it, I'm happy to bring them uh, to bring them to you. Right, so next up we're going to do a wash, and for that we're going to use the good old talent in a pot, a Grax Earth shade, and I'm going to be applying this with the um, with the wash brush, with the shade brush. Sorry, from Citadel Color. Again, I believe I mentioned this before. I'm uh, not one for lots of different brushes. I mainly just like to use a lot of my standard brushes, but uh, or as they're called now. Um, medium layer brushes however for things like this for large areas of wash on the wash brush very handy I'm going to take a bit of that I have a tiny little bit of water to that very tiny just to thin it out and uh, I'm going to apply this across the wing in the direction of which the plane would be mainly flying which is forward, it's the only way they can fly, aren't helicopters after all. And it's looking quite heavy but it, as it dries out and I give it a second coat it will uh, look a bit more, a bit lighter and a bit more evened out. But yeah, Still got the black to apply to the nose <clears throat> or the propeller end and um, the wheels however I don't personally generally shade apply wash to black so um, I'll just do those after okay so it's the bulk of the plane done 
this one nice little bit on the wing again bit of water going over in the direction of the uh, of travel I had to wait for this to dry a little bit at one point so it has gone a little bit streaky just in the middle there you might see but obviously a lot of that will be covered up with uh, with the next coat so it doesn't really it's not really the end of the world in the little pool there we'll get that out oh yeah so we'll just give that a moment to dry and I'll be right back right then so there's that wash all dried nicely and got uh, plenty in the recesses so that's the main bit that's going to show again it looks a little patchy on top because I've applied it quite liberally but uh, um, a lot of that's going to get covered up now by the next uh, layer which for these I'm going to be using the original coat the same as the uh, original base coat of Castellan Green and a bit of Steel Legion drab for the brown areas which is very close to the um, the leather brown the army painter leather brown spray uh, it certainly does the job in this instance right then so for this once again I'm going to be using a standard or medium layer brush depending on what uh, painting language you speak in In a lot of respects, I'm still speaking old, uh, old Citadel paints and brushes. I've been known to still call this Catechin Green. And still Legion Grab, uh, Drab, Graveyard Earth. So I'm applying a little bit of water to this. Only a little bit because I just don't want a bit of coverage. And I'm going to apply it mainly on the surfaced areas of the... Um, of the panelling and I'm going to try as best as I can go in the direction of travel same as with that again this might come out a little bit patchy when done but um, you know as far as I'm concerned that's fine because obviously this is a, a working uh, a working aircraft it's gonna have the odd battle scar it's it's up there being shot at amongst the flak and the elements so hey if there's a little bit of a uh, there's a few dents and scrapes. Well, there you go. What can you expect? I'm getting this in some of the recesses, but because it's been watered down, I'm not expecting it to be as bad. But then again, I can just use a, a, a detail brush, and just dab a little bit more in. And that'll cover that up nicely. So again, I ain't worried. Just trying to leave as well a little bit of the sort of under, a little bit of the um, colour underneath, just to break the camouflage up a little bit. A little bit of the washed green as well. There you go. So, nearly finished up here. I have a light bit of a uh, bit of Steel Legion drab across all the brown areas, which I've done. Same process. Mind you, it is a little bit here to uh, a little bit difficult here to go with the f the sort of direction of flight and not get it all over the green, but. Um, I don't even see this brush looks a little messy. I'll have to probably give this a little trim before I uh, carry on with it. I don't know what's happened there, it's fairly new. I'd say I'm not cleaning it properly, however, <laughs> cleaning it exactly the same way as all my other brushes, so I don't know what's so special about this one. Right then. So just the last little bit here. And there you go. That's all that layer done. On the top, I might have to do a little bit more in a second once it's all dry, but that looks good to me. I mean, we've got a few, uh, as I say, it's a little bit patchy, but that's all good. That's what we're going for. Um, I have to keep a bit of the detail. I'm not doing another highlight because, as I already said, this is about getting them done quickly, 
get them tabletop standard. Uh, for me personally, the scale, obviously not being huge. Um, but yeah, we'll get the detail on, do a nice job of it, but as I say, I'm not going to absolutely uh, you know, kill myself trying to get this super detailed, because at the end of the day, that'll look better on the table as it is than it will having a load of planes that aren't painted at all. I mean, maybe one day I'll come back uh, to them and do that, but um, maybe not. Right then, so for the next uh, thing, we're going to flip this over, and we're going to now do this bit on the underside with a shade of pallid witch flesh. As I say, a very slight off-white. Um, prefer it to the sort of more greyer off-white. It's one of these things, it, it does look white until you actually put it next to something that's white, so uh, that's kind of exactly what I was going for. I did do it on my Spitfire as well, it's possibly a little bit wrong. But um, it, it's better for the other planes I've done, so I had a little bit of water in that. Actually, I'm saying that this is quite another one that I've had for a little while. It still does very well as a paint, but it has uh, gone a bit wet as well, so uh, let's just get a bit more. Well then, again, this will need a couple of uh, a couple of layers, I do believe. But I'm going to try and get this up just on the panels as best I can. Yeah, this will need a couple of coats. I'm going to get it on the panels as best I can, and again in the direction of travel. It could almost become my catchphrase, I think. Like Duncan Rhodes has uh, two light coats. Well, if I'm not comparing myself to Duncan Rhodes at all, but uh, two light coats. Mine is in the direction of travel. Yeah, you see, actually, that's not too bad. It's, it looks like it's covering it quite well, but um, and also not going dropping into the recesses, so I like that. Nice one. Okay, so that's the underneath of the plane done, and now I'm going to move on to what will be the very last bit. I use my standard brush for, and that's the uh, the nose of the plane. With this, I'm going to be using Abaddon Black. The box art uh, for this has a, a sort of white uh, nose, but um, the uh, 242 Squadron uh, reference material I've been looking at, the noses are all black, so that's the colour I'm using for this. Um, I'll also be using Abaddon Black on the um, landing gear, but uh, I will uh, be using a smaller brush for that just because of it uh, being a bit of a tight space. Plus on the uh, the wheel at the tail I need to uh, go around that a bit and keep some of the white. Very careful there. Yeah, get a little bit of uh, water on this as well. Brush it, this one's a bit messy, so hopefully, I'll get away with it now and then change it up in a second. Okay, so that's the undercarriage done and the nose. For that, I use the uh, artificial brush. And next bit of detail we've got the frame around the canopy. And for that, I'm going to be using, once again, Castellan Green. Oh, okay, I thought it was one of those pots that doesn't want to stay up. Uh, personally, I think this is the most fiddly bit. So I'm going to try and apply this very carefully. Because these uh, frames are going to be a nightmare. 
if uh, sorry this window canopy is going to be an absolute nightmare if I uh, mess this up I'm uh, not watering this down once again because well I just want to really ideally try and get this all on in one go Okay, and I think that's the uh, frame done. Right then, next up, I pick out some of the detail on the uh, machine guns with Evil Sun Scarlet. I will uh, make sure I water this down a little bit because I don't want it to be too bright, and that is very thick. So it's almost base colour like. this and along the top oh, this is looking okay it's looking all right to me I uh, know it's on the camera it's looking a little bit garish but um no I think this looks uh, looks okay in reality and uh, same on the other side drop a paint drop a water Once again, and along there, and around the guns. And there you go. Put on the underneath on this side as well. Make sure I'm getting it all covered. You are. Don't know if you can see that so well. But there you go. Bit of a highlight just around the, uh, the holes of the machine guns themselves. So next up, I'm going to do a bit of um, highlighting to the uh, the black areas. For this I'm going to use Eshin Grey. Let's be quite simple. And a tiny, tiny drab, dab of water for this. That's a bit too much because I need it to be quite thick because I've got to actually paint a little, try and paint a little pattern with this. So, uh, right, and so on the propeller, on the prop itself. Let's just take a tiny little, oops, tiny little grey line. On the front, I'm just going to do it on one side, which is in this case where the light is actually reflecting. Yeah, I like that. And then a tiny little bit on the underneath where the uh, tyres are. And just on that one and there we go right painting wise that is done Turn upside down so I don't knock uh, that wheel painting wise I'm calling that done next up onto the transfers you'll find a full list of the paints I used in the uh, video description below for decals, I'm using the uh, 242 Squadron ones available from Miss Minis. Warlord have um, since released a, uh, a set of decals for uh, 242 Squadron. However, these do a great job and they've got nose art for every plane as well as the character specific decals 
such as um, those for Douglas Bader and uh, McKnight. Mm -hmm. Just a second to soften. Let's get it out and apply it to the miniature. Now, it applies quite far down here by the wing. Perfect. Got another uh, pre done one here for reference. But uh, yeah, to me, that looks pretty good where it's placed. A little bit more of this on it just to keep it soft. A little lab to get the excess off and just to try and uh, push it down as best I can. There we go. Looks right to me. First deckle applied to the wing, a uh, RAF rumble. And for our final addition, decal wise, this miniature, us completing the uh, the plane. This little letter to denote it's uh, his number within the squad. LED, Douglas Barder's uh, aircraft. LE, of course, being the uh, squadron. Uh, oh, little wobble there. LE being the squadron uh, initials. And D being. Uh, Plane's uh, own ID. As well as uh, the number itself to uh, make sure Douglas Barder's plane stands apart from the others. You have um, this little uh, flag or whatever it would be. Again, if you know what that is and denotes, then please let me know. Again, I could Google it, but that's not part of the fun. And um, and here we have the, uh, the nose art itself, which you uh, can't really make it out of the scale, but it's hit getting a kick up the arse. By a big boot. So I'm just letting that dry a bit this time before I try and uh, dab any excess away. Just to be fair, a lot of the excess looks like it's gone. And there we go. Completed Hurricane. The one belonging to Sir Douglas Bardet. Now, let's go and pop this with the rest of his squadron and we'll have a look at my RAF so far. We have a uh, mix of Spitfires, Hurricanes and uh, the Bristol Blenheims for the bombing missions. I'm going to just go into them first. So, again, all pretty much the same as what we've already looked at. The main differences being the gold and silver areas or metal and uh, I suppose copper areas. Um, the copper has been done with a base coat of uh, Screaming Bell followed by a wash of Agrax Earth uh, Shade. Another layer of Screaming Bell just sort of around the edges and then an extreme edge highlight of uh, Sycorax Bronze. And for the metal areas um, this was uh, the same as I've done with my JU88 uh, tutorial but that's um, Lead Belcher with a wash of null oil and uh, inside the engine areas themselves we've got a wash of Agrax Earthshade and then um, it's followed by another layer of um, lead belcher and uh, finally on the tips of the engines there you've got um, a little highlight of uh, iron breaker just to give it a bit of a, a bit of sort of an edge highlight and a bit of um, an appearance of, uh, of movement in the propellers. Right and up next we're going to go on to the, uh, the Spitfires the nation's favourite aircraft and uh, for that we've got um, a Salem Arn squadron with him at the front there as the ace. Uh, I don't uh, have as much knowledge of this particular squadron, obviously um, it's something I'll have to read up on, however any information, anyone wants to give me any little tidbits, that's uh, much appreciated in the comments below and obviously uh, good for everyone else to read so please share your knowledge. Uh, and over here we have, oh actually before we move on to that, yeah these are painted pretty much 
exactly the same. In fact, looks pretty much, but paint exactly the same way as the uh, Hulk Hurricanes with the decals coming from uh, Warlord Games themselves with that original set of uh, decals that accompany the release of the of the kit. Right, and now over to finally the, uh, the I suppose the Royal Canadian Air Force, my Hurricane Squadron. 242 Squadron led by uh, Sir Douglas Barder at the front there that we just had a look at. So all of the uh, planes were painted the, uh, painted the exact same way and um, using the decal sheet from uh, Miss Minis. And if we just go down into these main two, my second ace there is, um, or non-character ace, is the plane belonging to McKnight, as denoted by the little reaper symbol he has towards the, uh, the middle of the airframe. And... Yes, the uh, the other the other ace of the squadron uh, who was unfortunately uh, killed in action. All right then, so with that, um, I'm looking forward to uh, moving on with this set. I've got a uh, set of uh, Bristol Bolt and Pull Defiance, sorry, and I'll be doing those next in the, the same style, and then I'll be looking to move on, um, possibly looking at a later war period colour scheme for some of those, such as my uh, Boo Fighters, as. Um, I'm looking to move into the sort of Pacific region, mainly Burma, and that's a project myself and Gia are doing for uh, the entire, uh, for every game, bolt action, cool seas, and, uh, and blood red skies, of course. And for that, um, Gia's already picked up his uh, new Japanese uh, fighter planes that are due to be released soon by Warlord. So I look forward to seeing them. Um, in the meantime, next up I'll be doing something for the Luftwaffe and uh, a showcase of those. I've got a couple of things to look at with that. So um, it's my uh, Schmidt BF uh, 101s and uh, my Stuckers, which I'm particularly excited about. One of my favourite uh, German planes, mainly based on the, the, the appearance more than anything else. So uh, we're looking forward to moving on with that and bringing some more to you. Um, but uh, in the meantime, if you enjoyed the video, please like, comment and subscribe. Um, all uh, comments and uh, constructive criticism was all much appreciated. You can also find us on Twitter at, at Small World Games for uh, regular updates. And until then, we will see you next time. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.